welcome to yet another album review by yours truly, The Rebel. So, I'm very excited for this one because Operation Mind Crime by Queensryde was such a fun experience, was such a fun album to listen to back to back so many times. And I'll tell you why, because to summarize the album, it's an 80s melodic progressive metal concept album. And what is a concept album, you may be asking? A concept album is an album that, a musical album that tells a story, so every song moves the story forward. So you can't be skipping songs and things like that. To really f experience the story fully, you have to go from beginning to end, just like in a movie, you know, you wouldn't skip to the end or skip to the middle. It's like you want to watch from the beginning, middle and end, right? That's what this is, it's like a movie in music form. So let's, uh, I want to get to the story, which is the most interesting part. So let's get the technical things out of the way quickly. First of all, the members are Jeff Tate. On the vocals, on the guitars, we have Chris DeGarmo and Michael Wilton. And on the bass, we have Eddie Jackson. Lastly, we have uh, Scott, Scott Rockenfield on the drums. Awesome drummer, by the way, he got some great feel, some great beats on the song. But yeah, the songwriting, just like any prog band, they they experiment, you know, a lot of experimentation. It has uh, many uncommon song structures, like for example, Mind Crime itself, Operation Mind Crime, the, the title song has verse chorus, guitar solo verse chorus, as opposed to, you know, the normal structure that you see in popular music, which is verse chorus verse chorus you know so but that's a given for a prog band but they did all of these experimentations like the the latin chanting sounds here and there or the normal sounds like uh ambient sounds like storm like a thunder things like that uh, all of these experimentations are enough that it's still prog but it's not too much that it alienates normal listeners like myself which leads me to say that this album is a perfect introductory album to prog metal because I'm not a prog listener and I quite enjoyed it and I'm, now I'm a big fan of Queen's Rise because this this is a masterpiece this album is a masterpiece and you're in for an experience if you listen to it but yeah there's many heart stops and there's uh, silent moments and there's high moments you know that it just keeps you at the edge of your seat so overall great writing but yeah it has many techniques that are common to just the 80s metal you know it has staccato it has legatos it has big high vocals and things like that things that you would expect from a normal 80s metal band plus the experimentation which makes it prog but still easy to listen to uh, when it comes to production production is um, it's amazing, you know, honestly, like most of the 80s production is very good. Uh, it's a wet mix, and I love wet mixes. And a wet mix, as opposed to a dry mix, is uh, done by the use of delays and reverbs. So it's kind of like a big room mix, as opposed to like a small room. And if I were to compare like a hammer heating on a wet mix, it would sound like, you know, like big. And then if it was on a dry mix, the same hammer would be, you know what I mean? So, it, of course, it's on the wet side here because it's 80s. That's That was the thing. So, yes, uh, the vocals, the lead guitar, the drums, they have those kind of effects to make it wet overall. Uh, the bass, I'm not sure. Generally, you don't put it on a bass. I don't know if it, this one has, but I know that the bass is very clear. And every instrument overall is very clear. Like, they all have their own space, nothing on top of anything. And you you can hear every instrument, even the bass that is usually drowned in this genre. Here it's very noticeable, but once again, not too much that it's overwhelming. So great mix overall, great producer. When it comes to the vocals, one of the best things in the whole album is the vocals. Like Jeff Tate has such a high range in both directions. He can go so high, like in the song A Sweet Sister Mary, which is the longest track with 10 minutes plus. That one features both the high and the low of his vocals. He can go so high that it sounded almost like a woman, you know? And it fits because it's it's a song about a woman and that one. So maybe what they were trying to do is like maybe say that she was singing those lyrics. I don't know, but it's a compliment. 
in this case that he sounded almost like a woman because he went so high but every time he sings high it uh it has so much passion and energy you know and then the opposite is when he goes low it's just so calming and he almost could send you to sleep in a good way uh, and it's on the more mellow parts and that's what i love of, of that song itself that um it has everything it has uh, the lighting chance it has the high emotive parts and it has the calming parts it has everything so that's definitely a highlight but um yeah his technique is just unparalleled and uh his vibrato is incredible his control is incredible he definitely knew what he was doing and he would easily sing opera if he wanted to and i don't know if he's done it but he definitely could and um the solo is not much to say more than the fact that he's Chris DeGarmo is an incredible guitarist with a lot of technique but um, he didn't just play to show off like the solos told a story of their own and they also moved the story of the song and the album themselves so uh, very tasty solos overall like you could hear in the solo in the beginning it wasn't the hardest solo overall but it, it was what the song needed right and th that was his intention you can tell the highlights I don't want to give too many highlights because every song is a winner like you just hit any song on the album it's gonna sound good to you but some of my favorites are definitely uh the singles right the revolution calling eyes of a stranger i don't believe in love they're very easy on the ear and very memorable but then you have uh operation Minecraft itself was stuck in my head yesterday but today before the album review uh, the needle lies was stuck in my head you know the chorus and spreading the disease or the mission are also very solid songs so overall and of course uh, Sweet Sister Mary yeah, is like the long experimental track so it wouldn't be like a highlight like a single but it would be like a highlight just as a highlight like a, a memorable track and now we get to the best part of the album review the story itself and like I mentioned before it's a concept album every track moves the story forward so I'm going to go like track by track and tell you what each track what part of the story he tells right so first of all we have I remember now which you know you hear some steps of the nurse and the the whole situation it's a mental hospital and she approaches the bed of our main character and he's a patient there of course and his name is Nikki and you can hear the news playing in the background and things like that and she's like why are you awake so she gives him a medicine who knows maybe she injected something maybe gave him some pills but she sends him back to sleep or so she thinks but uh, she's walking away she's like she looks back and she's like sweet dreams you bastard so it made me think like okay they don't like him very much in there right but before the track ends he's like I remember I remember now and that's present time right but it seems like he has forgotten how he ended there that's why he's in the mental hospital but uh it seems he remembers so he takes us back to the past to how he ended there so now we're in the past and that's what anarchy x and revolution calling are talking about he's basically a heroin addict who becomes disillusioned with society corruption the reach over the poor social economic imbalance you know those kind of political topics and he joins this revolutionary group that manipulated him essentially to joining them because of those beliefs he already had so that's what those tracks uh, mean then we have operation mind crime the title song which basically is here's this dr x uh like a demagogue or demagogue whatever you spell that and uh he he brainwashes Nikki, our main character, whenever he says the word mind crime, he becomes like a puppet of Dr. X and he does his beating, he becomes an assassin for him. So it reminds me a lot of the story of the best friend of uh, the Captain America, where, you know, Bucky, the silver soldier, who also becomes an assassin because he's brainwashed and then after the fact, he doesn't even remember. So that's kind of like a story that, uh, uh, those two stories are pretty much the same in that sense but then you have the song speak which is a heavier song and that song talks about the height of him like he keeps going higher and higher and higher on the rankings of course we're talking about Nikki 
and his ego grows too so he's like so grandiose and it's like look at me I'm all this and that so that to me is like the biggest height of of the whole story because afterwards it starts going uh, downhill and you're gonna see why because the next track spreading the disease well like the name says right uh, there's this father there's this priest he's a corrupt priest and uh, he has this nun but it's not a common nun she used to be a prostitute and he saved her from that life it seems so but to me it's kind of ironic because okay you save her from that life but then she offers her services to Nikki so they start a sexual relationship and that's why spreading the disease right probably HIV those kind of diseases but then we get to the next song which is the mission and he starts doubting the mission he starts doubting the organization and what they stand for and everything else and it has a lot to do with he be, he falls in love with with the woman with Mary that's her name he falls in love with her she loves in love she falls in love with him and uh, she kind of starts motivating him and breaking the brainwashing that Dr. X put on him so she's like a good person and she's influencing him in a good direction Let, let's get out of here you know this is not what you thought it was kind of thing and so Dr. X is not dumb he realizes this so that's why in the next track which is the longest track uh, Sweet Sister Mary you hear in the beginning the car pulls over window goes down Dr. X says to Nikki kill her and Nikki is like, Mary? And he's like, she's a threat. And kill that priest too. He goes on his way. This is not a mission that Nikki wanted. I mean, he's done the killing, but not his woman, right? So in Swiss Sister Mary, he goes back to the church to kill both of them. He only kills the priest. And while the priest is dying, he says, thank you, which left me thinking, why did he say thank you? Maybe he was thankful that all of this was over who knows but uh, he said thank you while he's dying no problem then goes to the nun to marry and he just cannot do it love is just so powerful I guess that not even the brainwashing can make him kill the woman he loves and I guess also the brainwashing was probably already losing some power because of of her influence beforehand already but yeah he does not do it but later in the next song he does the dumb thing that heroes do in stories but they go to the villain and they tell them that they're they quit you don't do that in stories because the evil guy is gonna kill you or they're gonna take vengeance on you right and that's what happens here in, in the next track which is the needle lies he goes to dr x he tells him hey we're out we, uh, i don't want to do anything any of your beating i'm out so dr x tells him hey Suit yourself, but you'll just become an addict like you used to be, a useless addict on the street. That does not seem to face our hero, so he goes back to his woman, Mary, and this is the worst part. He goes to the next track, which is Electric Requiem, where he opens the door and he goes looking for Mary and he finds her dead. She's dead with her, with her collar thing there and she's just dead. He's like, he's so troubled because, first of all, she's dead. Second of all, did I kill her in one of my mind crime moments? And who cares if I killed her? Like, she's, my woman is dead. Like, he's like, he goes crazy. He goes berserk. And that leads us to the next track, which is Breaking the Silence. So basically, he goes out of his mind. He goes on the street screaming her name like, Mary, Mary. He's just so heartbroken and just overwhelmed with the whole situation. And that attracts the attention of the cops. I mean, the cops were already looking for him. They were already sus suspected that he is the one who killed her. We don't know if he killed her. It's later revealed what happened to her in uh, Operation Minecraft 2, but I don't want to spoil you guys. Maybe on the next review, but that leads us to the next track, which is I don't believe in love. So the cops find him not hard to find, right? He's screaming like a crazy person in the street. Probably somebody called the cops on him anyway. And they tell, take him to custody and they're like, why did you do it, you know? And then when he's alone in jail, he's he's just like, that, that's why I don't believe in love. He's just thinking about Mary. It's like, okay, everybody in my life rejected me probably. 
everybody left me and I thought you were different but you left me too and you left me with no goodbye of course she died tragically right so that's why what I meant before when I said this is not your common uh, I don't believe in love ballad no this is a song the very tragic song so yeah he basically is saying like I never believed and I never will so he's just very heartbroken so then the next one there's two tracks waiting for 22 and my empty room are like uh, two ambient tracks you know short tracks that I mentioned before and these ones are basically kind of going back to the present because he's basically suffers a mental breakdown and he's taken into a mental hospital and he has memory loss you know so here we're reaching full circle because it leads us to the last track which is eyes of a stranger so eventually we go back to the present time and he's staring into a mirror and he's uh, just looking at those eyes and he cannot recognize who that is number one because of, of the memory loss but number two probably he can recognize who he has become because of all the killings and everything that he's been through right but the cool thing is in the end of that he says I remember I remember now he says exactly what he said in the first track so we go full circle not a happy ending not a happy story but there is Operation Mindcrime 2 which I mentioned before so the story continues uh, I don't know what happens next but that's kind of how Operation Mindcrime 1 ends you know he's that's the full circle that's that's his story that's how he ended but yeah overall I love this story um, I enjoyed this album and I definitely want to listen to this album closing my eyes late at night just put my headphones and just on one go listen to that whole story but yeah very enjoyable I'll definitely get this album I'll buy it I recommend it and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed the album review and I hope you enjoyed these tracks tell me what your favorite track is tell me what you thought of the album and uh, yeah on to the next one so Awake the Rebel Within